Hello, this is Susan Corbin, and this is my uh, number one tutorial in my series on how to paint decorative papers. This is going to be the basics, the type of dyes and paper to use, and just getting wonderful color on the paper. So we start with silk painting dyes. The ones I use are from GNS Dye in Toronto. They're called Liquid Colors. You can see that. And you can also get those in the States at Dharma Trading. You can also get, they're not, they wouldn't be GNS Liquid Colors, but they'd have their own brand. Um, you can go to your local art store. You should be able to find little bottles, probably, of a silk painting dye. They're dyes, rather than paint, very liquidy. That's the dye. Then we have the paper. You can use watercolor paper, drawing paper, pastel paper, mixed media. You can just experiment. I'll show you in a minute how different papers react differently with the dyes. It depends really on your end product. If you're going to make a collage with them, you might want them to be the lighter drawing paper. If you want to make other artwork where you want torn edges, you might want a watercolor paper. It just depends what you're doing. If you want to make books, then maybe the lighter weight paper. So let's have a look. What I'll first start with is some 80 pounds. I'll show you what paper I'm using. This Strathmore Drawing 80 pound paper is really nice. Takes the dyes very well. So the first idea is, if say you want a plain color to just do other decorative uh, techniques on top of, the easiest way to get the dye on there easily, uh, evenly is with just a cheap acrylic brush, a nice big one. And I've put water in with these dyes. That's the other thing. I can use them direct, but uh, a, they soak in faster, so I don't have as much room to play. And B, they're just pretty intense colors, so I I prefer to use work with uh, them a little lighter, because then you can do layering and things don't get too dark. It just depends on your preference. So there we go. This is watered down again. I put about at least double the water that I have dye in there. I only have a little bit of dye in those in those. Uh, little bowls. I've got two pieces here. And this is a beautiful cyan blue. Now you can see it's so wet I'm getting a chance to move it around so that I get a nice even coverage. However, you'll see when I put this through the same thing on another paper it won't work quite the same. So there's a beautiful solid cyan blue. And it's not wet on the back so it's not too messy to just lay down somewhere to dry. Now, if I take, just to illustrate how different different papers are, this is a 98 pound mixed media paper. Now, let's do the same thing. Same color, same water down blue. I'm mixing it around, I'm just moving as fast as I was with the other. But now I'm out of, I can't even cover it. So the dye has soaked in much faster into this paper. And that just does different things. Takes more dye and also it's pretty much impossible to get a solid, smooth, smooth coverage. You're going to get these brush lines, which might be what you want. It depends what you're looking for. And you'll never know wh what paper will react to which way. You just have to try. Trial and error. It's experimenting. This is a lovely paper, and it works. I use it all the time, but that is the difference. Just to show you, there's the other paper I did earlier. And not only is it smoother, it's actually looking like a different color. So that's a good, just a, something to be aware of. So if you get some paper and you get your dyes and try something and it doesn't work very well, you try another paper. You may work on another paper. So now I'm just going to show you the um, striping effect. I did these stripes earlier. These are very watery. I make sure the I do this quickly as well so the dyes are watery enough to blend. And then I also did some stripes on a watercolor paper, which is also quite absorbent. But you do get a little bit of watery mixing, and if you don't want that, then you can just take your time and wait to put the second stripe down until wait till the first stripe's dry and then you won't get this 
but you'll get this nice clear line. So let's do that on this paper. For this I have some smaller brushes, a pointed one, different sizes, and I'm going to be using some different colors. So let's I don't you could plan this, of course, if you wanted certain colors and you wanted certain types of blending. But it's also fun to just go for it. Some light yellow, lemon yellow, some rich yellow. I've got a lot of at this point I would put some more newspaper down maybe. I'm getting a little bit of that blue in with my mixing in with my colors. With some pink. So the pink's very watery. And it's really blending. Although the yellow has then I can start going over the yellow as well. And the beauty of these dyes is they kind of keep their strength when you mix them. If you use watercolor dye that way, they kind of, uh, the top color wets the bottom color again and they start moving, it starts moving around and you, you get kind of a muddy mixture if you do that too much. So these keep their clarity when you do that. That's why I like these dyes so much. And they're they're a bit more intense than watercolors. So, well, with this blue, you can see it's quite watered down, but it's it's a beautiful clear blue. Still, it's not uh, it's not pale. So there's some blue I'm putting in. Now that's that's kind of painting the stripes while the dye is wet. Let's go over here and take one of these, and that's the 80 pound paper again. That particular Strathmore drawing paper takes these dyes really well. So if you can find it, it gives this lovely, soft, clear effect. I've used uh, pastel paper before, and that's different again. And some papers, because they don't hold very much dye, you'll get a spottiness. But this remains really smooth result. I'm just going to show you. Uh, let's see. We'll use blue since it's a. So now I can paint just a clear line because the underneath colors are dry. So depending on what you want, if you want a clear line like this and some clean stripes, then you would not be going quickly and mixing the wet colors. If you want this effect where they blend, then you're just going to work with the wet colors. So that's the basics of just getting some pretty colors on the paper. The other tutorials will show you how to do patterning over those. But this talk, this gives you an idea of the dyes and the paper and the very beginning step. See you at the next tutorial. Bye-bye.